Hi everyone, welcome back to our One Cold Cam channel. So this is Ian and for this video, well we are actually down to the last video for our EJS tutorial series. And for this one, we are going to create um, a project which is a blog website. So on this project, we are going to integrate all of those concepts that we talked about from our past videos. We are going to of course um, avoid the EJS linter errors by applying the best practices that we um, learn not to do for us to not get any of those errors. We also um, will be um, passing data from our web page to our server directly. We are also going to um, refresh you with the concept of scope, how we can use them into um, different templates in our EJS project. And then um, also we are going to um, do module exports by creating functions and data and passing them from one plan template to another. Lastly, we are going to be styling our project using CSS by uh, the topic that we've learned from also one of our past videos about how to integrate CSS style sheets into our React project. So I hope you guys are excited because I am. So let's get started. All right, so we have here, um, we created a new folder we named blog. Let me um, make our Visual Studio code bigger. Screen loading. Okay. Even bigger. All right, there it is. Okay, so here is the um, project file or the project folder that we are going to work on to create our blog um, application. So in here, I was able to download the um, NPM, Node, and Express as well as EJS already. It's already in here. Now, um, what we are going to do first is to, um, of course, create the structure of our blog. So in here, we are going to add in um, the abuse folder. Okay, and then inside our views, um, we are going to add two more folders. The first one being the templates, the EJS templates, and this time we're going to call it partials. And then another folder that we are going to name pages. So from our previous videos, we were um, was able to only um, create one folder or files under the inside the views folder. That is because we're um, most commonly using just a single page. Um, application to those examples but for our blog um, application we would like to imitate um, a multiple page or at least um, two pages for this project that we're working on so this is where the um, two pages will go and this is where the components or the different parts of the um, pages that is that we are going to utilize in each of our web pages so first for the pages we have here of course let's create a file let's Name it home.ejs. This will be um, the landing page. And then here, let's go ahead and create this file um, right away in our home.ejs. We let's change this to blog home. All right. And then inside our body, then just fix the indentation, of course. Inside the body, um, what we want to include here are of course um a navigation bar and also like a title at the very top saying welcome to my blog okay and then, then down here like at the um, body part or the center part of this um web page is where we want to put um the list or for our um example we only have two um links for both of the blog posts that we will be creating and that's pretty much it. So I think I want to put in here um, the header. Let's see. Or the navigation bar. Nav bar goes here. And then maybe we can like create um, a list in here. And then let me just make comments here. List of blog post here. And then down here is where we want to have our footer. Okay, so that's uh, what actually our um, partials folder will be composed of. The components or the parts of our web page that we need to use um, to be using repeatedly on each of the web pages for us to have a uniform look. So this goes the footer and then maybe now we can create um, another page would, which would be, let's name it post one that EJS. Then let's create another one for the second post. So we are targeting to create um, two more pages aside from the landing one, which is going to showcase the individual post that um, we will be creating. So for the post one, 
basically this should all should only have um for the title in here maybe this post is about learning javascript maybe this would be like uh, let's say this will be a blog website for like uh, a programming journey of someone um that is new to the uh, programming in general maybe we can do that so with this post page let's see so of course we want to have here the title and then in close in a p tag is where we want to have the content which is basically we're just going to be um, using a lorem ipsum um content in here and then down here will be the footer i think it'll be better for us to um create the partials now so we can include in the navigation bar as well as the footer on each of these pages so let's do that now inside the partials folder let us create first the header header.ejs and what we want to have for the header is of course just navigation link header okay and then inside of the header is where we want to put in the tag nav and then inside it let's have an an order list and then for the first line item well let's insert an anchor tag and then maybe this can represent the home let's copy paste this let's create two more links for this one this can be an about me page and then for the last one is for the contact me okay uh for now let's just put in a placeholder for this link we're going to i think we will be creating two more pages aside from the post um pages uh for the about me and the contact contact me uh page so i think we are good for the header now for the footer inside partials let's create a footer component this time and then what we have want to have for the footer is just a single line uh we don't want to include anything else in here but just maybe like a trademark let's use this whoops should be an upper ampersand copy this is going to um show us the copyright symbol and let's just put in the year in here to give that um real website feels okay i think i'm happy with our footer now let us go ahead and integrate them with our home page so in here let's remove the comment and then let us just include um our header um template so let us redirect javascript to the location path of our headers um partials partials okay and then the name of our file which is header okay and then let's close that don't forget to close it all right and then okay let's do this later on since we will need to complete the server first and then down here let us put in the footer include and then that would be here two folders up inside partials folder and then in the footer file okay okay did we miss anything okay that's looking better okay and then we can just copy this into our post post page so let me see let's just remove this and then we can just say think remove this see oops um, we have not created the boilerplate for the html here okay right okay let's go back to this pages later on i think we have the structure for now so we have the pages and here are the partials okay let us create our server now so let's of course be naming it app.js and then inside our server let me see so of course in here we're importing express require express okay and then of course the express function my visual studio code is 
Typing in real slow. Okay, there we go. All right. Fun sport. Okay. And then here is we set our configuration. Setting up EJS as the view engine. KEJS. All right. And then, oh, of course, we wanted to add another configuration in here so that our file can read our um, CSS files that we, of course, will, would be creating later on. We are going to style our um, blog page and then we will be serving uh, a CSS file later on. So that's what this line is for. And then, then down here, maybe we can now create a variable for our blog post. Blog, oops, post. And then we wanted to um, enclose it in an array. So like what we're discussing so far, we just would want to show um, two blog posts or two blog entries. What happened in here? Okay. So for our blog entry, what we want to happen is whenever our user clicked um, the link, for a specific blog post through our homepage, it should be rerouted to um, another web page and it should like have its own ID for the blog post. So let us create in here a property of ID. And of course, let's also add in here the title. So we can add dynamic elements to our web page since we will be just hard coding its actual content. So what did we put as our first post? Learning JavaScript, right? Okay. Right. Then let's create another one. Why do we have an error here? ID1 title. Let's see. Hmm. ID2 title. For the second post, maybe we can just put in here using print stack. So this sounds like my coding journey when I was first starting. So let me see. Let's, oops. Oh, I know now. This should just be a comma. All right. And then now we can set up the routes. Have that get course for the landing page first. Then forget your quotation mark. Then we add in close this in parentheses. Okay, let me see. What did we miss here? Up that get direct rest. Okay, so it's not close yet. That is because we're missing a closing parenthesis here. Okay, now let us go ahead and render the home page. So that is inside the pages folder and then the file name home. Okay, and then we are going to also pass in the blog post variable that we declared up here. So I think it should just be, hmm, should be follow this naming convention. Right, let's go ahead and do that. So let's make, in, let's make the P uh, in uppercase so it matches. Okay. Let's create a space here. All right. Now let us get or set up another page for the first ID um, entry. So the URL, what we wanted it to look like is, of course, the pages folder and then an ID number of that um, entry or that blog post that our user chose. So that's how we want the URL to look like. Okay. And then inside this, let me see. That is declared a variable. Maybe let's name it post ID. Okay. Okay. Then we're using the params um, property. Then we're calling in the ID. This will help us find the blog post um, by the ID that we indicated um basically the, this actually should work in a real life scenario or in a real project um we should be like querying this um post against uh, a real database but of course we just want everything to be simple and 
we're trying to like just emphasize the concepts about EJS that we have worked on so far. So maybe we can create another topic for the database, right? Okay, just for now, let us have everything stored in our server file. Okay, this should be equal to post ID. Okay, right now let's set up a condition in here if the post Yes, that render. Now, if it happens to be that that um, post number exists, of course, we want it to be rendered. Let us create in here a template literal map, the location of our post file. Then we're going to call in here the variable post followed by the ID. Then there, this will handle that specific post corresponding to the ID that we provided. Oops, and then, now what we want to happen instead, if it happens to, if the user by any chance tried to access um, a link, or like maybe they try to manually um, try to access um, an entry for the blog post, but it's not existing yet, maybe we can like uh, render in here an error. This is where we can apply the concept of success and failure pages. Okay, render. Okay, so I think we will be creating another page for um, success and failure pages later on. Maybe we can do that now. We can put that inside our pages folder and then let's just name it VB404. Okay. All right. Okay. And so maybe I wouldn't want to create this file now. So it doesn't send sleep on my mind. So inside the pages folder, let's just create 404.ejs. And I'll have this filled later on. Let's go back to our server. And then we just wanted to include the last line in here for the port. So we're using the same port number as usual, which is the port 3000. Okay. Server is, we want to say running on port. And let's just call that port variable that we declared mom earlier. Port. Okay. All right. Our server looks okay at this point. Let's just save the file. Now we want to, of course, see if our links will be working. Let's check in here. So for the post in here, since we already um, included title and ID number from our server, maybe we can now put in here, this is not the landing page, so it doesn't need to say welcome to my blog. Maybe we can put in here the title of the blog instead. So let's just now um, extract that from our server. Let me make sure I have that correctly. So this is title blog post title right so here let's just type it in post that title all right and this should um dynamically post or um display in here the title of this um entry or this blog page that we will be accessing later on and then maybe down here is where we can put in uh, the content which is just an alarm if some content for now let me put that here. Let's further up. Okay. All right. And then we have here our footer. Okay. I think this is looking okay. I think we can copy this to the post to that EJS. Okay. So let's remove that. Sure. Let me see. Let's move our footer up here. And then fix the indentation. Okay, this is looking okay now. Uh, let's see how it looks like on our live server so far. So, we are inside the blog folder. Let's uh, change the directory to... I think they'll, this will work. Let's just type in here node app.js. Let's minimize our Visual Studio. Okay, we got the message server is running on our port. 
So let's now activate our live server. Let me minimize the file explorer. And then let's see if what we want to happen will reflect to our web page. Okay, where did our live server go? It's here. Bring it here to this monitor. Let me squeeze this in. This big. Okay, I think that's big enough. Then we are just um, typing manually the port. Okay, we have an error. So it cannot see the home file. Let's see what happened in there. Maybe we have, let me, oops. Maximize our Visual Studio Code again. Pages home. Pages home, maybe we did something wrong in here. Okay. What did the error said again? Let's make sure we have it correctly. Failed to look up pages underscore by pages slash home. Okay. So maybe we will need to pass in one folder. Let's see if this go into work. Pages. Okay. But I think I am routing this correctly. Let me give it another try. Pages home. Blog post. Pages ID. Home.ejs. Okay, let's see what's happening in here in index.js. Pages.post. Let us check our home file. And so it says in here that we have to look up a view, pages home. Oh, okay. I think we forgot to include the views folder. Let's see if it, this is going to work. Let's save the file. Run our server again. And let's see. It still cannot find our home. Ah. It should work with one directory of but maybe let's try to with this i normally just um like keep on trying like play around with it until it works so that's what we're going to do now let's go to the directories up okay let's see where's our oh right there we go so it should be this file location all right then lesson learned Okay, so let me minimize this again so we can see the components better. Okay, so this is our, I cannot see our home. Okay. All right, so this is now our home page. So that is the navigation bar up there. Later on, we of course want it to be in a single line only. Just like how um, normal navigation um, bar looks like. We're going to handle that once we are on the CSS part. But for now, I'm pretty happy about it. This is our footer. We um, wanted to make this um, a sticky footer as well so that this will stick here at the very bottom no matter um, how big is the content here in the middle. Ooh, we have an extra uh, closing bracket in here. Where did that come from? Oh, I think this is this guy up here. Okay. Let's run that uh, later on. But for now... Maybe we can now uh, display, I forgot to display, I was about to, the blog list in here connected to these two different um, post1 and post2 EJS files. So let's do that now. Let me maximize our Visual Studio Code again. And then here in our homepage, let's remove our comment. And then we can now render the list of our blog post in here. So we're going to use the um, variable that we declare, which is blog post. And then we are now going to use the for each method to loop each 
of the item that we have inside this array. Okay. And then let's close it first before moving on to our next line. Now, of course, each item we want to be represented in the line item tag. It's not reading that. So I guess I, we will need to create the tags manually. Okay, there you go. And then we want to create anchor tags inside. Now, this, we need to be very careful. So it's inside pages. And then here is we're going to put in the ID of the um, pages dynamically. So we want to call in the post that ID again. Close it. Okay. And then we um, would want to include or write in here, of course, the title of this specific blog post. Okay, so let's post that title. Title. Okay. All right. Okay, we close the anchor tag as well as the line item. Okay, let us now close our scriptlet tag next. So we're closing it. I hope I do not waste anything. Okay, that looks like it. Okay, we're basically um just be copying it to the second should we oh no this should only be available on the home page since this is where the part where we wanted to render the list of the available pages okay so for the post one we have here the title and then the mock uh, content same here all right um so we have the title Lear learning javascript for the first one maybe here we can just put i think we put in here um we're in stack let me make sure what did we put in here using bring stack? Okay. That's what maybe we can just copy and paste that. All right. This is what the title would be for our post to that is a yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Wondering if we can just like do this same in here. But anyways, let's just leave it hard coded for now. And then what else can we change for now? I think that would be it. Okay, let's test it on the live server again. Uh, terminate this. It's not responding on me. Okay, there. And then run our server again. Okay. This should be gone, right? Not showing anymore. We have extra characters in here. Where did you guys come from? Okay. But let's see if the links are working. These would not. Well, for the first one, this will redirect to the landing page, which is where we are we are at right now. So let's test this once we are on these two pages. But let's try the first link. Okay, we are now on the post one that is as file. And then this is how we want the URL to be. Um, grabbing the pages folder and then the ID for our first blog entry. This is the title, rendering properly, and our hard-coded um, content. Let's click on home. Okay, we are now routed back to the landing page. And then let's try the second blog entry. All right. Blog entry here is working as well. We have an extra closing tag in here. We're going to fix that as well. So let's see. What do we need to fix? This guy's in here. Okay. Oh, I think these are these ones. Okay, so I think we don't need you guys there. And then we have extra ones here. Save the file. And then here as well. Okay. Working good. Um, where's our home file? Okay, there. Okay. All right. Well, I'm pretty happy about it. This line works properly. Was able to render the list dynamically by, add by adding it the uh, link for the respective page. And then it also rendered in here the title of our blog entry. Let us save the changes. Let's rerun our server. See? All right. Those extra guys now are gone. And let's try to go in here again. We don't see the extra closing tag. Okay. These are not working. We will need to fix these two links in here. But the home page is properly working. Okay. So now that we have um, a structure for our blog website, um, next, we are um, going to work with styling. And then on the latter part of 
our um, project, maybe we can also add in um, the feature where our user can log into our website and then create comments. We would like to be able um, for login users to be able to comment on a specific um, blog entry. Maybe we can have that displayed here, comment box in here, since this is a blog website. Okay. All right now, how do we do just that? So first, um, let us integrate the login feature first. I'm going to maximize our Visual Studio code once again. Okay, and then maybe we can add in our login feature on the header. Okay, and then here on the header among the links, maybe it can be like the last link from our list in here separate that so what we um, wanted to happen in here is that to um, pass in a login feature so we will be creating uh, another another login um, file and this should say login okay, let's see how that looks like now in our app.js in here let's see what we can do here so we are um, going to add in another um, variable here down below our blog post array. So let. So for now, we are going to hard code um, the number of users that we will allow um, access to our web page. Well, basically, they can um, access the web page or the blog, all the um, entries. For all the blog posts they can access but what we will happen want to happen in here is that we want to add a feature for users to be able to comment out or to um, add in their comment to a specific blog post just like what we've mentioned from earlier so i'm adding in and a variable is authenticated for us to keep track of whether the user has uh, been able to log in successfully or not so in here let's see we are passing in the variable is authenticated in here and then let's copy and paste this we will need to pass it on to the pages as well okay and then then down here is we are uh, going to set a route for our login page and that will be a get request this time since we will be creating a form for the login fields yes rec it should be rec first and then followed by a rec rest okay and then we want to render the login page so it should be inside the page folder as well like this let's open our file explorer okay and then let's create our login the djs here all right and then let me see maybe we can now create the login page so in here we just want to create a form um we want to send it to login and then let's add in a method attribute that should be post and then we are just going to be asking for um a username but let's add in another attribute username let's also add in a placeholder just to be more user friendly username and then let's also indicate that this field should be required let's copy this for the password field okay so this will be password password in the name attribute as well and then same here let's just make the letter p uppercase that should also be required okay and then lastly let's now create the submit button this would be a type of submit okay and then we just want to say login as its label okay thank you. i am happy with our login um, file now let's go back to our server so in here let me see okay Let's add in here now the post request for our login to be rendered. So that 
not in inspect should be wrecked first and then red and then inside we are now going to create the variables for both our username and then the password and then this would be of course the um, representing the request body now we are going to make use of the variable is authenticated up here. What we want to happen now is that um, we wanted to determine if either uh, the user was able to successfully log in, if they were able to properly or uh, correctly input the correct uh, login credentials. So again, we are going to hard code our users in here. So I am typing in um, a username that we that's, that uh, we are going to allow. So let's just use the John is our authorized user so again remember that that in real life um, application we should be comparing or doing the authentication process against a secured database okay and then now we're going to if it happens to be that we were able to sign in successfully we're going to set the is authenticated variable to true this time and then we want that once um, they were able to log in um, properly from our login page, they will be redirected back to the home page. So this is our road. Oops, our road route. And then oh, let's make the else statement we now. It will just be if they were not able to log in, we would maybe hmm, send them to another failure page okay so i think we will be creating a failure a page as well failure okay all right let me give a quick scan okay all right let's save this file and then well um we want to test it now if it's working let's rerun our server and break it work close this minimize file explorer and then let's start from the home page and then refresh our browser okay so we now have we are back to the page the first um blog entry now okay so we are uh, now seeing the login um late from our home page let's see if it will it did redirect us to um our login form now let's see um so we inputted john and then one two three four five six for the password why is this showing <laughs> let's do something about it later on but let's see it on login okay we got an error cannot destructure property username of correct body as it is undefined okay let's see what's going on in there so our is our username and password is undefined let's see what we can do Okay, all right. So we forgot in here the um, URL encoded middleware. So let me go ahead and add that up here. So whenever there is a form present to our application, we will need to um, make use of these expressed feature coded. Then we will need to enable the extension to true. Okay. Uh, let's see where we did not close it. Oh, we did not open this one. Okay, looking great. Let me see if we miss something else. Okay. Log in. Render the login page and then for the post. Up that post, log in. Correct that body. Okay, I'm saving the file and then let's see. Let's go back to login that is. Oh, okay. So we did a typographical error in here. That's why it's not hashing the password. Okay. That should now have the password. We never type. We type it in the password field. So let's give it another try. Rerunning our server. And then let's go back to our um, root URL. Okay. Now let's hit on login. We are John. Password one two three four five six. Our hash is now working. 
And then let's see. Okay. All right. So now we are successfully logged in. Um, we are the, again redirected to our homepage, just like what we wanted. But we still see uh, the login um, information or the login option here, which we want to be changed to a log out option instead. Right. That's what, what we wanted to do next. We will need to change it to um, a log out option once the user has been um, successfully get into our website. Just for us to um, have this idea or have this um, clue that he were able to successfully log in. So let's do that next. Let us go to, let's see, maybe the um, header file again. So here on our header, let me see. Let's go ahead and make um, a conditional statement here. So if um, is authenticated, we'll be using the is authenticated variable that we declared authenticated. So if the user has been authenticated, we would like to display, hang on. So we would like to display in here the log out button since they were able to successfully log in already. So the log out um, button or link should just redirect them back to hmm, the home page, but it should like clear out the session of logging in. Let's see how we can handle that back on our server. But this is what we want to happen. And then let's close this. Okay. Else. So in each line, whenever we're using EJS template, we will need to make sure that we are typing in or following in the script tags. Kind of um, confusing at first. So you will like need to get familiarized with it more. So that you don't forget to close or open the script tags whenever you're using EJS template. And maybe we can just move it up here. A and then we can now close this script with that. Okay. Hope we did that correctly. I'm saving the file. Now we can actually like demonstrate here on the headers of that. It's very helpful because we also wanted for the login and logout um, feature to be present on all of the pages. Like for now, we have three pages being the home page, the um, two post page in here. Now us um, modifying just the header uh, file, we will be able to display the very same um, feature on the header tag without going through each of the separate page pages. So let's see if that's working now. So we were logged out automatically. I think we have not hit enter for the server to work. Okay, let's wait for our log and the console. There you go. Okay, let's log back in. So we are John. This is what's going to happen if you don't have a database. We have not um, activated or we have not um, also used the uh, session for the JavaScript, but that's for another topic. What's important is we were able to um, see the concepts integrated with using um, EJS templates with Express. So let's see. Okay, so we were able to successfully log in and there you go. As you can see here on our homepage, we are now um, able to see the logout option instead, which um, gives us the idea that we were able to successfully log in. Now we want to see that same exact option whenever we go um, either of these pages. Let's visit the first one. There it is. Let's go back to the homepage. And then visit the second page and and there it is beautiful okay now um well, what we want to do next maybe it's time for us to add in uh, a bit of a styling so it doesn't look scattered like it is now so let us create our uh, folder for the css file so here on our root folder we're just going to create a folder named public and then inside it let's create another fo folder we would like to name styles where did that go? Is it loading up? Where did our it is loading up? Okay, and then inside our styles folder is where we're going to uh, create our CSS file, which we wanna name style just a style. That CSS loading pretty pretty slow. Okay, all right. Now once we have our style. Um, file already. We actually, I actually was able to create in here a ready-made um, CSS file. So let me copy and paste it 
all here. Don't want to bore you with all of these codes for the CSS. Since this is not what we want to focus on, but here it is. The files will be uploaded on a GitHub repository, so no need to worry about getting the copy of these codes. But let's save the file, and then of course we want to have it um, integrated to our um, pages. So first, let us go to home. We want to add in here the CSS file. So let's just type in link, look for the link CSS. And of course, this is not our file location. Let's guide it to our file.css location. So that's inside the styles folder. Uh, let's just copy and paste this because we will need this to both post. Okay. And let's save that. Goes to post to as well. Okay. All right. I'm wondering if we will need to do this on the login page as well. Maybe we can. But we have not created the entire HTML file in here. Enough. Maybe we can just leave it as um, as a, a plain format for the login page. So let's uh, save our changes and see if we were able to um, route the CSS file correctly. It should now apply our styling. So have I saved every changes now? think so. Let's rerun the server. Okay. And no, it is not applying our CSS. Let's see what happened. Where is our home? It's not safe. Okay, let's do that again. Okay, here we have it. Okay. Oh, there we have it. All right. This is actually um, a pretty simple styling. We just like um, highlighted and like highlighted the navigation bar as well as the footer. Then we aligned um, all the links in here in a single line. And then we just um, created um, a lighter background color for the body for the body. And this should work the same with all of the other pages. Okay. Now I think we wanted to move our footer here at the very bottom. So let's do that next. And then maybe we can also work on our um, comment box. Um, again, we would like to, of course, um, once the user was um, logged in, like what we we're discussing from earlier, we want to, them to be able to add in a comment to a specific um, post or a specific blog entry. And we want to add like um, a comment box down here. So let's work on that next. So let us now add um, that comment section. So here, uh, let's try doing it on the first blog entry for now. And then we're just going to copy and paste everything on the um, post to that EJS file. So in here, we wanted to add uh, a line that we want to identify the comment section. Add a comment. Add a comment. Okay. And then here is the form where we can um, pass in the comment from the user. Now, what we wanted to happen in here is that for every comment, um, we should like have it um, have an ID along with it for it to be um, posted or for it to render as an individual comment. So we would like to um, tag in every comment that we are going to make with an ID number along with it. So it should be a post method. And then inside we just needed an input for the input uh, for that like the box field and then let's name it comment let's just skip the id part and then maybe we can just add in here a placeholder type your comment here type your comment here okay and then everything's very scrumpy in here <laughs> let's just add in the button okay and then this will be a type submit button not button submit and then it, we just want to say have our button say submit comment as simple as that and then after the form for the comment box you want to now display the comments down here just below the comment box 
So since there are no comments yet, we are adding in here a conditional statement that's going to work once there are like there's like um, a single comment available. Okay. So maybe make sure to close it. Be very, very careful with watching out for your scripted tag. Make sure that we were able to open and close them properly with the proper syntax. Why did my H2 tag didn't work? H2. Okay. And then this is where we want the comments to be displayed in uh, an, an order in this format. You, uh, and then now, since we are uh, provisioning this blog website to have multiple comments, we are going to go through each comments so that they can be posted for each. And then let's just use in a comment variable that we are going to pass in to our server later on. So we're going to fix everything in there. Make sure that in every new line that we are creating on our EJS template, we should be closing it. Like our script like tags should be properly closed because this will cause a linter error for us. And then we are now calling in the comment variable um, individually here on the list item tag. And then now we're closing this. We are closing this with an opening script like tag. And of course, a closing script like that. You are okay. All right. So we open this and then we close it. Now we're going to close this line as well, of course, under the UL, the closing UL. The scriptlet tag, its syntax, its syntax will really um, require some time to get used of. So it needs a lot of practice before we can finally tell when to close it, what's missing, and when it's good to go. Just like what we have in here now, I think everything's working fine on our um, post one that EJS file. Let me grab a quick look again. Okay, all right. Now let's head back to our server file and then add in um, the feature for our comment first. And um, what we are going to do is to um, add in here along with our blog post variable the um, variable for our comments. So. We want to pass that here. So our comment, we are going to store all of them in inside an array. So we can just push new comments directly. Okay, we're doing that. We're doing the same thing for the second page. Okay. Okay. Now, let me see. Maybe here, right below the route for our pages. Let's add in here the route for our comments. Have that post. We are now just going to provide the route and oops, comment for our comment, which holds like what we're discussing a specific ID, which we want to be beautifully, beautifully represented on the URL, which I'm going to show you later on. Now we're going to be using the very same variables up in here. So maybe we can just copy and paste them. Okay. And then now we are going to add in um, another conditional statement just like in here. But of course it will be um, a different statement. So if, and in here what we want to happen is that if the user is authenticated, that's the only time that they can add in a user or that they can add in a comment. But if they are not, you would like for them to be redirected to our error page, to our painter page, where there will be um, like a CTA for them to um, log in if they are an authorized user. 404 for our file name. Let me just check. Okay, maybe we can ch uh, change the file name later on. Okay. All right. So now we are catching the scenario wherein they are not authorized. Now, if they are authorized, if they are signed in and done, our sole user is signed in. Of course, of course we just want um, his comment to be shown in our web page. But the that comment. If 
the comment were able to successfully be imposed or if it meets the requirement from the form we're just going to use the dot push method for that specific comment that we're trying to create to be added in our array and then after adding in the comment we will just redirect them back to the same page that they are trying to post the comment on so we're just adding in here the very same page uh, we're adding the um, page url dynamically with the use of the post id variable okay and then here comes in our else statement which is again would just return back the user to the failure page be direct pages Taylor or 404 right 404 for the name of our page okay all right what else are we missing okay now for the login we now have the login all right now um since we are now activating the feature for the login we might get an, now an error for accessing the is authenticated um, variable here on our server now remember that this is authenticated will only be um will only work or will only be accessible by templates that we declared it to like the specific web pages like here we declared it on the home page of course and for the um, following pages that we have as blog entries now we happen to um, utilize the variable that same variable on our header where is our header here now we have not made a route remember for um the header but we use here the um, variable is authenticated now we will get an error if we are going to run our server now and that's what we um what we wanted to avoid but maybe it's a good uh, idea to show you guys the error so you can better understand what um, i'm trying to point on let's run our server and let's go back to our root url oh i uh, could not find matching close tab 4 let's see what line is this array that for e it doesn't say okay let us go back to where the close tag is the only file that we handled for now is the post one in that ejs so let's take a look at this so these are the only things that we updated right so let me Make sure we have everything written correctly. Post at comment land. Okay. Yes. Closing this one is exactly what I'm try trying to warn you about. Let's check for more. Comment. Okay. Let's close. Okay. Run this again. Okay. There we have it. All right, this is the error uh, that we are trying to see. Let me maximize the router. So we now have here this error that is authenticated variable is not defined on the header file. Now, how are we going now to make that variable be accessible by the header if it's not um, included on our server file? Well, the way we do it is that we are going to utilize another uh, middleware. So let's add um, a middleware on our server. Uh, okay, so let's add one up here. Oops app dot use so we're going to make use of the dot um, locals middleware the way we use it is we request and then next we pass in all the method that we are going to use in here as a parameter and then we're passing it in an arrow function and then here is we're going to call in the dot locals method and then next is where you can pass in the variable that you want it to be used globally or that you want it to be used in all the templates that's existing inside your web application and then we're going to pass in a next variable or a next function as well just for it to proceed on the next set of instructions if there are any let's save this file and then have the server rerun okay there you go we can now um, see that we are um, rerouted to the login page because we tried to add in a comment without signing in Let's sign in and try to add in um, a comment now. 
since we are able to comment let's see if it will reflect our comment down here and there we have it we uh, now see the comments uploaded in here let's add another one and there it is again okay well in real life scenario with uh, real blogs you should you can like um add in the name of the user that add in that um comment as well as um, a timestamp on when they added that um comment so those are the things that you might want to work out um in this project further feel free to explore now um what we want to happen in here next is for the logout button to function so you can see it's still um not hugging us out we are going to fix that and then finally, let's do some adjustment of, again, the footer. We want it to be sticking here at the very bottom. So let's go take care of that next. So for our log out, let's see, it actually should work. But let's see what's not making it do so. Okay, what um, we wanted to add in here is a log out route. Let me see, log out, log in. Okay, here. And then let's add it here as our very last route so log out oh, don't forget the slash in here in front and then we're also going to check our header file since that is where again our um, log out um, feature is available we will just make sure that before we run our server everything is properly coded in there so the way we log out uh, log our user out is that we will just be resetting the uh, is authenticated variable back to false, back to its original state. So as setting it to false means that they are not authenticated, and of course they will um, be out of their um, tag as a sign in user. And then we would want them to be redirected back to the home page. Okay. All right, and let's just give a quick check on our header okay log out oops now we can add here the log out route okay and then now let's do something about this footer that's really bothering me a lot okay so the way we can um, adjust the footer is by um, editing our main file or our index file so maybe we can wrap everything inside the body in another div container. So let's create another div container and let's name it um, Lapper. Okay. And then let's just put everything inside here. Okay, let's just fix our indentation a bit. Okay, all right. Let me see, checking really quick. Okay, I think I'm good with that. And then on our CSS file is where we, of course, will make use of that um, wrapper div container that we just updated. And then here is where we are going to add in our wrapper. There we have it. We already have our wrapper um, in here styling already made. So let's just have it rendered. Rerunning the server. Oops. Okay. All right, there it is. Our footer is now sticking at the bottom. And then let's try to add a comment in here without signing in first. Now we want next to be routed to our 404 page. There we have it. And then next we want to be routed on our login page. Okay, now let's add in John, one, two, three, four, five, six, saying the house password out loud. Don't copy that. In real life scenario, we should be very, very careful in putting in our password. Okay, we are now logged in as a user. Submitting a comment is working. This is not passing in or making the footer at the very bottom. I'm going to check that later on, but let's try the log out function in this time. Okay. All right. So we are now log out since it um, turns to log in in this time. But just to make sure, let's see. Yeah. And yes, we are log, log out successfully since it's asking us to um, log back in. All right. So we will need to do the same thing here. Wrap everything in um, or a, a div wrapper kind of views, but let's just do it real quick just for everything to be beautifully aligned for the footer to be aligned down at the at the bottom part we don't want it sticking in the middle of our page so adding this here make sure everything is indented properly okay i think i'm good with this then let's just do it on our next 
page dev id wrapper okay all right pass it inside oops why are you not indented okay all right let us save the file again okay let us go ahead and access our url so first okay that's there now let's check the second web page oh we forgot to add in the uh, comment box in here now what we uh, will need to do is just to copy and paste this here and it should work exactly in the same no i thought of checking if it will work if we just save the file but now we need to rerun our server still but we have not added an comment that's why oops john one two three four five six Hmm. Oh, we have not added the form in here. Okay, let's do that. So we missed this part. Okay. All right. Quickly rerunning the file with the server. Okay. All right. And then let's just log in. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have an error here, 46. Let's see. Maybe we missed to do to update something for the post to that EJS file. But where is our apps that folder? I mean apps that file. So it is line 46. Did we? Oh, I think this is the part that we missed. Yeah, instead of comment, it should be comments with an S. That's the variable that we um, declared. Okay, see, and now we're logging again. As you can see, it, whenever we refresh our server, it uh, does not save the changes that we've made. The comments here are gone. That is because we don't have an integrated database. So that's also something that you want, might want it to look into if you would want to improve this very simple project. So there it is. So you can see, um, we are now done in creating a very, very basic um, blog um, website using the concept of EJS as our templating language. We, um, again, integrated all of the things that we have talked about from the past videos. I, again, am hoping for you guys to um, make it prettier somehow in, um, in like, staying it in a um, styling or in a front-end mother or even in back-end by adding in a database. So I hope you were able to pick in uh, to pick up um, a thing or two from our EJS um, video series, and I really hope to see you on the next videos that we will be creating soon. Thanks and goodbye.